welcome to corporate r and ia 4.0 corporate media house today we have with us mr rohit kora he is the ceo of jindal panther cement which is the unit of jindal steel and power limited so good to have you sir yeah very good very good afternoon sir thank you and today we are going to discuss about the cement industry so we have couple of questions i'll be asking them uh, quite quick to you so the significant changes are there in the cement industry and uh, there are a lot of challenges in terms of sustainability and the carbon reduction so how is jindal planning to reduce the co2 emissions and move towards carbon neutrality okay thanks uh, thanks tanya for giving uh, me and my team this opportunity so as you rightly mentioned you know this this industry is transforming at a very rapid pace now and sustainability earlier was more you know in terms of a passion but now it become it's a, it's a need of the time and we are taking a carbon footprint reduction and carbon footprint in a very uh, very strong focus in in fact the entire business plan that we have uh, one of the fulcrums of our strategy is that we reduce the carbon footprint as we go forward and the way we are doing it is that uh, if you look at our product we are essentially focused on for the composite cement which is uh, you know bulk of it will be slag and ply ash which are the waste materials which are available not only that we are also looking at how do we reduce the carbon footprint in terms of our fuel strategy in terms of our power strategy so our cape plan is going forward we will intend to have uh, in terms of our fuel Uh, green hydrogen, but of course it will take time because as of now, uh, the we we have not reached industrial scale as far as green hydrogen is concerned. In terms of power, yes, we are looking at renewable power very very seriously. Uh, we are looking at uh, both having our own captive renewable, but also uh, we are looking at if we can purchase renewable power and have this uh, power housed in some other SPV. Apart from this, what we are also trying to do is uh, we are entering into a very different product which is ground slag which essentially is a replacement of cement and this segment uh, this product will be focused on the ready mix concrete segment here what we are planning to do is that we transport slag nearer to our markets especially delhi and cr or maybe kolkata which are the two major markets which we can serve and we take this slag by rail to these locations and there we use renewable power to grind it and finally we are also looking at the option that we can use uh you know ev bulkers so instead of using the typical diesel trucks we can use ev trucks to deliver cement so the entire focus is uh is just to reduce the carbon footprint going forward and i am very hopeful because if we are we are only 30 40% dependent on the clinker which is the basic raw material our carbon footprint uh, would be lower than the many other players in this industry and that that's a starting point so we will be uh, you know our benchmark begin with cell will be very good as you have already uh, mentioned the usage of uh, electrical power plants and the renewable energy that you are planning to imply so uh, there are certain challenges also while uh, material rec- reclamation and uh, optimizing raw material selection so uh, what are the steps do you take to minimize the wastage and uh, to produce more efficient resources in terms of the manufacturing process so you know we are a new player uh, because these are new plants so while we are a very late entrant it also gives us an opportunity uh, to be you know very latest in terms of our technology so we are talking to leading players and we are trying to uh, you know uh, bring in our uh, manufacturing processes the best uh, the state of the art know how that is available apart from that uh, the another area where we are focused on is as i said Uh, the essentially is to reduce the clinker component in this segment which which you rightly mentioned how do we know that the product mix at the end we are also looking at a very strong instrumentation and a, a, a very strong digital network because at the end of the day uh, you know uh, these plants are operated remotely from the central control rooms so we would like to make sure that we have complete handle over the, the manufacturing process which means At every stage of the manufacturing process, not only we have uh, visibility, but we also have a decent control. So we are also looking at instrumentation, uh, very, very, very focused fashion. And that's the second thing. And the third thing is we are also trying to work uh, uh, with uh, 
other institutes, especially NCCBM. We're also in touch with uh, CRRI, where if we can uh, develop products uh, which are more green, uh, where we are, we are optimally utilizing the clinker, which is essentially a high carbon footprint manufacturing, uh, where high carbon footprint manufacturing is required. So these are the three areas where we are focused. And uh, we are very hopeful that as we move forward, because we, we don't have uh, a legacy. So we are starting on a very clean slate. So once you start on a very clean state, uh, so we don't have any legacy. So we can always look at doing things differently than what has been done. Definitely. Uh, so actually one of the important aspects is traceability also because digitalization have come up, blockchain is there. So uh, any strategies to implement and leverage digital identity where you can actually trace your products, uh, how is it moving, how is the logistics going on in terms of monitoring and optimizing uh, the environmental performance and also the mechanical performance of the product? So digitalization, yes, as I said, uh... No, uh, unfortunately, this industry is not as digital savvy as many industries are. Uh, but then there is a challenge because at some stage we have an interface uh, with variety of players. Not all of them have that kind of infrastructure or have that kind of savviness when it comes to digitization. So the the vanilla digitization which this industry has seen is is the visibility part of the digitization, where you have complete visibility, whether it's in terms of your supply chain, whether it's logistics. Uh, the important point is, as you have mentioned, is, is the traceability. So, for example, if one bag of cement leaves my premise, uh, do I have a traceability of that? Can we identify that bag as to where it leaves? So, that's challenging. But to be honest with you, we really don't have an answer as on date. We are looking at digitization not on a standalone basis. It has to be part and parcel. So, for example, what happens is if we have a manufacturing process where we are taking, you know, uh, you can say, uh, software support from XYZ support. Then there is another equipment where the support has been given by anyone. So there are multiple softwares. So the first challenge for us is can we integrate and can we have the entire information, the entire data? Uh, you know, we need to make sure that these equipments are able to talk to each other. These softwares, or, you know, I don't know the exact technical term for it, but that's where the challenge is. So can we get it at one, one place? And then the next challenge would be how do we use that information? So these are the two things. A lot of work has happened. Uh, it's not that uh, you know this industry has uh, not seen much development with this, but I think a lot needs to be done. Just, just give me a. So these are the areas which we are looking at. As I said, for us, the digitization is a part of the overall business strategy. We are not just looking for digitization as an enabler, but it's a core part of our strategy and uh, visibility of supply chain, we would like to take it to a further point in terms of not only we have visibility, but also whether we can build in, uh, or we can have a digital uh, platform where we, you know, to, to begin with allocate vehicles or allocate our transport infrastructure, uh, which is completely digital. So instead of any human interface, if, uh, you know, the allocation to various trucks also happens digitally, it also happens through automatically. So that, that's the kind of, uh, you can say, the, uh, the path that we are looking at, but it will take its time. So that will automatically increase the interconnectivity and real-time information exchange uh, with your suppliers, with your vendors, so that they are also pretty much connected with the company. Thank you so much, sir, right. for answering the questions. Uh, it was great to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you.